option to tell you that you're not playing your but game I, right. I, I, I look but, at it differently. I, I feel as though, because I'm playing this game because I want a good competitive match. I, I understand I'm that being, too. And, know, and more times than not, I would say something. Hey, yeah. man, you're forgetting attack, you know, or you're forgetting this. Sure, it's all high and mighty. Would I say that in the finals of a big tournament? Exactly. Maybe well, not. yeah, I've exactly. never played that in a tournament right. setting. Right. In a casual game, you know, I have no problem taking back things and right because uh, we're it, in the end, we're all still friends. You're still friends playing. But if I was at a shop and I was playing against some guy, you name Woodside. No, what I'm, 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 not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm talking about just you know, if I'm at a shop and I'm playing and I'm like, this guy's not playing his codex right, and he's shorting himself. That's his tough luck. I will say, um, kind of like the the standing rule whenever I ran ran my shop was you didn't you didn't have to tell people during the match. But you were kind of obligated to let them know afterwards. Hey, you kind of did this and this yeah. and this wrong. Right. You know, you need to look at this or this or this. Well, first of all, you don't want to do that in the middle of the game anyway because it drags it, it out. It's going to slow the game down. Yeah, forty key games, hours. Yeah. Right. So, but going back to role playing games, though, you know, and that's one of the things that slows down games so much. Also, is looking up rule crunch. Oh, yeah. If if somebody's playing, if you're playing a game and you know, let's say you're rolling and you're you think you have this ability and you you're you misread it or something like that, and then you come back later and say, "Hey man, you know, I looked at it and I, I really screwed this up. You know, I didn't mean to. I'm not going to be upset with you. It's just like, hey, you know, as long as it it didn't totally destroy the the bad guy, and it's like, okay, well, how did you get these extra six d eight on your attack? <laughs> if it, you know, if you're pulling out something overtly like that, then most likely we're going to stop and go, where did you get that? But if it's something small... Yeah, there's a difference between a cunning yeah. cheater and a uh, just straight up, you know... Yeah, I think that time uh, I called out Scott, it wasn't for, like, dice rolling or anything. I think it was straight up, his character was built... Well, yeah, you he wrong, he had had po- he had put points and things that he yeah. didn't, you know, and, and it's very easy to do, manipulating points and things like that for, for characters of advanced level. I mean, it's it's really easy to do, and, sure. and, and the thing is, it... It's easy to make mistakes in that also. You know, it's like, oh man, my guy is six level and I forgot that every level he gets an additional skill point because he's human. Right. Yeah. I'm going to add that, that in. to me just with the with Star Wars. Yeah. And, and you, so you add it in and then all of a sudden people are like, well, you weren't no, you weren't any good at that. All of a sudden you are. Yeah, so you know, I'd, what's going on? I've done that. I, I missed my human feet and my human skill. I right. think, uh, especially keeping track of an epic level character. Mm. You know, when you get up, when you're close to 30th level, it, yeah. it's just, especially when you're playing a fighter and all the feats that they've gotten, it's right. ridiculous. It, no, it, it's, uh, it's really easy because you've got them all. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, well, it depends on how many books you're yeah. using, too. Because yeah, like, you start digging into other source books and stuff, and you know, I, I know there when we were playing the the epic level characters, we were scouring every book we could find, oh, right, and using books that were completely mm. not made for for standard fantasy D and D, let alone yeah. of that level. Yeah, right. One thing about playing characters that are above twentieth level is like it's, there's no real reason to do anything. It's like, like I had to remake uh, my epic level bard from scratch a couple of times. I couldn't find the sheet. Right. But I know that I'm a 26th, 27th level bard. There's not a lot of that I can just throw onto the sheet that's going to really impact the game that much. Yeah. So, so at that point, it's almost... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Coming from the guy who said he sung a silent song that leveled an entire city? <laughs> uh, it, was a, it, was a, it was a palace. Oh. That was just a spell. Sure. <laughs> sure, it was. Um, all right, well, now there, there's, there's cheating on your character sheet. There's char- you know, your character thing like that. What about cheating in the uh, cheating the essence of a game and what i'm talking about is like mark making his own character for a completely uh gm character created game (laughs) he's talking about the sith character (laughs) mark conveniently the only one who made his own character because he just can't be bothered by that's not what i'm that's not what i'm talking about i I wasn't aware that we were going to use gm created characters what Nobody spirit, told me. I'm sorry, spirit yeah. of the game. That's where spirit, I what I'm you were talking. Going. What I'm talking about is like a character build, like Deuce making a character uh, that it completely. You, you could just stop at Deuce making a character. A Deuce making <laughs> a character. No, just you know, spirit say, of the game. Or just C- let's Deuce. say let's say we're doing the 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 Sea Princess campaign, and somebody makes something that's completely not sea based. You know, just not just going off script. That's cheating the essence of the game that you're playing. Mm. You know. I come in with a cavalier knight, you know, like a mounted knight. Yeah, oh, get my horse into your deck. <laughs> well, I mean, or just, you know, we're taking it very seriously. But, yeah, let's say you make a cavalier, but he rides giant seahorses, you know. I'm listening. 
Okay. <laughs> I haven't made my character yet, so <laughs> I'm all I've got. I got the stats right here. So. I mean, there, there's there's cheating the essence. Of so wait a minute. Game. Actually, I'm thinking about this right now, and Mike could say, "Well, you guys were talking about making goblin pirates. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fun." I <laughs> totally agree, but not with the I, essence n- of the campaign. Not in the essence of the campaign as we are playing. Right. Yes. As a separate, maybe a comical campaign, I think that would uh, work. We don't have to run a comical. I think that would be awesome. So. Well, it would run a serious campaign, but you'd have it would have to be comical. It may end up that way. It would. You know it would. It have to be. But, but that's if everyone's on board. You're talking about one person trying to derail the entire thing. With a, yeah. yeah, so you're you're cheating everyone else out of their experience. Yeah. You know, not experience points, but the experience of a shared experience. Right. It's, it's kind of a, another place where you got to police your own. It's like, if I if I decide that I'm going to make a cavalier with my, with my new stats here and show up with a horse and, you know, a lance and whatnot, and if you guys let me take over your Sea Princess campaign with that character, that's kind of your fault. I'm not going to do that but you know it's like right but still it's good luck getting that horse on my ship exactly it was like you've, that's <laughs> yeah. what you've got to do but you've got to no, he can bring the he ship can he can bring himself. the horse on board we'll eat it but yeah you you have to if pickles was still on <laughs> yeah you would be <laughs> the underlying theme of all this is that you have to police it and if you don't it's just going to get worse because then it's like well he made a you know a seahorse barbarian Cavalier, you know. I, I think I think I would probably with wings and I think I would probably be more apt to call another player out if he was stepping on my character's toes. If if I've got a guy that is, let's say he's a he's a ranger and he's his specialization is dealing with animals and he makes a character that's particularly has has an affinity with animals and he's really good at that and then he's he's also really good at brewing potions. Well, now he's stepping on the alchemist toes. You know, talking about stealing other people's thunder. Right. If you've got a, if that's you've got a guy, Scott likes to do. If, if you've got a character that's focusing on being able to be really good at this one thing and maybe something else, and you know the guy next to you is doing the same thing, and then the guy across the table, he's trying to cover what you do and he's trying to cover what he does. Right. You know, and his his stats and his his uh, ability in, in that particular. He's like an every man. Yeah, he's. And, and yeah. I've I've played with guys whose whose characters can't fail at anything. Sure. Their skills are through that's, the roof, and that's and the failure of the Chris Pronger syndrome. Yeah. yeah, well, and they and they, they can't fail any good. any skill roll or any any attack roll or any you know. It's just like oh man, this is just exhausting. It, it, you know, he's the he thinks he's the star of the show, and the rest of us are just you know window dressing. I don't right. know if that's cheating so much, but uh, it's definitely uh, certainly it's being not a cheating if, if they've fudged everything on their character. Well, yeah, if it's illegal, sure. yeah. Oh, yeah. but if it's if it's all legal, then that's just him. Trying to steal your thunder. Min Maxon. Yeah. Okay, here's some here's something that I've always thought was cheating, but it was taken for what it was, now necessarily given who it was, but let's say you make a character and you use their backstory to garner an advantage within the game. Let's say you're a lumberjack whose father was also a blacksmith. So you right. could pick locks. Sure. Okay. Right. No. And Mike laughs. He was, he was a <laughs> locksmith woodsman of oh. noble birth. Right. Okay. That's exactly that's exactly what <laughs> that, was on his character. And that's seat. because it was an old second edition rule where it was like some sort of a background thing where yeah. you yeah. if you're if you were an a, a, a locksmith then you could have the picklock skill, right. you know, that kind of thing. I I believe that was in Skills and Powers or uh Oh yeah. We I, surprising. I rode him so hard every it's chance just, that I could get about that. I, really I've bad. always thought to me whenever and this is partially why I don't like backstories is too often it's used to garner an advantage within the game. And I, I just, I don't think that's, I personally think that's kind it may not necessarily be cheating. It's borderline. I, I don't uh, really think that the rules nowadays, as far as D and D goes, I don't really think the rules lean that way now. I think that back in second edition, like Eric said, I think that was, yeah. that was, that no, was it where would be, it's, it's up to the GM to say yes or no. Well, right. I, I don't have a problem with coming up with a background that gives you a maybe a unique ability or something that would give you an advantage in the game for a certain aspect of it. If if you can write that into your character's background, that makes sense to me. Uh, the Dragon Magazine, the uh, the regional reg- feats, regional feats, feats, and they've got them just in one of the books for uh, third edition uh, Forgotten Realms. Yeah. Most of those bonuses are really minor. It's just a, a little extra feat well, for a little see, extra flavor. I, there are a couple of them that are really good, though. Right. Yeah. As I recall, I think that the regional feats were supposed to be taken as one of your actual feats. Oh, like a human feat? But, but we made it a... We made it a freebie feat. A, another free feat that you get. Yeah, right. That was our house rule. Right. <laughs> yeah. Quote, unquote. <laughs> well, if everybody's doing it, then it's not cheating. I mean, I could be wrong. I mean, I mean I, but that's that as, I, as I recall. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, a I, power creep. 
there's different ways of cheating. There's dice cheating. There's you know the things. Yeah, like Mister Mike over here in trying his, to figure out his, che- his, his way, his to perfect cheat. way to drop dice so they won't roll, or <laughs> his slide method, <laughs> trying oh, yes. to. Uh, Take the randomness out of rolling, and if you do that, it's not rolling. <laughs> I go out of my way to try to keep my dice contained to the top of the book. We could talk about that a little that's bit. That's because you're insane. Right. Also, that's people crazy. also have the, the, that's a quirk. I've cheated myself out of 20s before by saying, well, I've it wasn't on the book. That's sure. true. Yeah, right. you know, and that's he's, you're consistent I, with that. Oh, right. Well, along these lines, you've cheated us all out of time. Yes, I have. <laughs> uh, Henry Rollins will call me a time murderer. Uh, you know, it's like having a cork like that is fine. Woodside will throw his dice across the table just on uh, any kind of roll whatever. Well, and he always has the marble dice. That right, that's really round. And, and, and if you have any inconsistencies in the table, it just kind of goes, and it rolls all around the table. Right. Never comes to a stop. Who's but it? it's like he couldn't possibly be cheating with that roll. <laughs> you have no way of knowing where that's going to stop wrong. Who, who, uh, who used to buy the clear dice with white lettering on it that you could not read? Uh, oh, that was me. That was yes. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good like, job. Who's that? So Good job. Class act. You could not one. read those. You couldn't even sit next to him and read them. You had to be on top of it. <laughs> Let's we'll see what it said. I had a standing rule where I would only buy ugly dice, but I got to the point where I'm like, I can't read any of my dice. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm pretty much the same way now. But yeah, there was a time when I was rolling clear dice with white white numbers or with black numbers. It doesn't matter. Yeah, um, if those clear dice are ill, just yeah, illegible. I've uh, I've selected my dice my my for my uh my uniform dice collection. What, what, what are you talking about the the Dan rule of dice yes, where you're going to have one Whoa. color right one it's set one set one color yes Q workshop no. yellow with with uh, sorry. black letters Q workshop sorry guys your dice are illegible what? <laughs> all of them because <laughs> of the decorative stuff on all the crap on uh, it. there's one I found that isn't all right. cool, isn't all that I'm trying to save you from screwing yourself I think okay. my uh, my rune dice are very legible the rune oh. dice aren't bad and I like the steampunk I think dice the rune dice are the ones that I was looking at. I have the rune dice. I have I have the bone and the white. Who has the Cthulhu uh, dice? I did. Uh, I have the Cthulhu dice. Unreadable. Those are unreadable. Yeah. Yeah. My the, nuke dice that I bought, unreadable. <laughs> unreadable. But bright yellow. But they're beautiful. They are beautiful. <laughs> What's, what, what kind of... Uh, the runes? Yeah. Rune, okay, runes with ye- yellow dice with runes. Okay. See, the, the, the nice thing about my dice is I can roll mine down here. And you guys can read them down there. Sure. You roll those, I probably can't well, read and, them. And the other thing that's nice about your dice is you can drop them on this carpeted floor that has multiple colors, uh-huh. and you can find them By easily. Yes. Right. That's you know, you know, I, a bright you, color. Yeah, you need um, ones that I need are... glowy ones. Yeah, I was say, you need irradiated <laughs> ones that glow, you know... <laughs> depleted depleted own, uranium uh, dice. LED <laughs> dice. Yes. I've seen those. They blink and light up. I, I like when I, you hit a 20. I have, yeah, I have, I have one. My yeah. wife got it for me for Christmas. It was a stocking stuff. I'm sure it's not weighted at all. pretty sure. You're right on that. It's not, it, I don't know about that. It rolled a lot of stuff other than the twenty. But when it does roll the twenty, I get really you know excited. It. It's blinking. It'd be is great. It, if, it only blinks when it rolls a twenty. Yep, dude, that's cool. It'd yeah. be great if it would play a sound too. Or like, more importantly, when it rolled a one, it was like. Or no, or no. So like, when you rolled a twenty, it would go. I rolled a twenty, so you bitches can suck it. Yeah, you can record your own, kind of like those. Those cards. Yeah, yeah, you know, the cards that you can record on. Oh, man. Ah, Kickstarter. There's a Kickstarter. Here. Yes. Uh. <laughs> Jake Jace got me good a couple of weeks ago. I showed up to his house on Saturday like I usually do to watch DVDs and hang out. And uh, here you go. It's a late birthday card. Like a very late birthday card. So I go ahead and I open it up, and it starts playing a really lame song. It may have Rickrolled me. I don't recall. Um, <laughs> he live Rickrolled you. Yes. And, but it was like song. I was like, you know, I'm just kind of shaking my head, and I give him the dirty look, and I close the thing, and the song starts over. <laughs> I was like, you can't shut bastard. it off. <laughs> right. It was like, it plays when you open it, and it plays again when you close it. <laughs> Brilliant. No, wouldn't a live Rickroll be Rick Ashley actually there? Showing up at your house. That yes. would be, that'd be something I That'd be the hope. ultimate Rickroll. I would do you that. Probably if, slip up a fifty. If, if, sure if, if I won the lottery, right. if I win the lottery, I'm doing. Or a it. <laughs> just say, oh, dude, we're gonna get sued by Rick Astley now. Damn it! <laughs> I'll slip him a fifty. I'll go away. <laughs> I'm suing you. Here's a fifty. Okay, never mind. Just you're sing the new, song, man. Just sing the song. You're my new best friend. <laughs> Any other any other classics? Like I know I uh, I stole Mike's thunder whenever I was talking about the uh, the GM screen, but that's kind of GM yeah. fiat to fudge rules. I think yeah. that's kind of accepted. Well, if okay, if it depends on what you're doing with it. If you're doing it to because 
essentially the the GM can do whatever they want to. You don't even have to roll dice if you don't want to. Right. But 